Welcome to Francis Reads the Bible. Pardon the noise. I can't escape it. It's everywhere. So I'm moving on to Genesis 21. And Genesis 21 is about the birth of Isaac. So the Lord blessed Sarah as he had promised. And she became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham when he was old. The boy was born at the time God had said he would be born. See, God is a promise keeper. This promise to Abraham about his son was made when he was since five years old, and now he's hundred. So it took twenty-five years for this word to manifest in his life, for this covenant, this promise by God to Abraham to come to pass. It took twenty-five years. And people here think i was guilty of this when you hear god says he's going to do something we actually expect it's going to happen now 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 like immediately uh, god's time is not our time so yes it took that long 25 whole years for abraham to get that son so god had already told abraham the name he was to give his son so he abraham named him isaac and when Isaac was eight days old, he circumcised Abraham circumcised him. You know, that was the covenant, the sign of the covenant with God that God asked for. And like I said, Abraham was a hundred years old when Isaac was born. And Sarah was so happy. And she said, God has brought me joy and laughter. Everyone who hears about it will laugh with me. Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. Sarah was past menopause already. I remember, I think names then were really important because God gave Abraham the name to give his son. And the name Isaac means he laughs because Abraham laughed then. But now he means something good, like people, everyone is laughing with them, enjoy their laughter. And Abraham gave a great feast the day Isaac was weaned. No more breastfeeding and all that for him. So he, Baby was okay now, so I can imagine after how many years a hundred year old man having a child. Then one day Ishmael or Ishmael, whom Hagar the Egyptian had born to Abraham, was playing with Sarah's son Isaac. Sarah saw them and said to Abraham, Send this slave and her son away. The son of this woman must not get any part of your wealth which my son Isaac should inherit. It's just reminding me of, I've heard of couples who, you know, they didn't have children and then they adopt. Then immediately the woman adopts or the couple adopts, the woman takes in, she becomes pregnant and she gives birth to her own child biologically. Then the woman forgets that, oh, this child is also, this adopted child was my child, you know. They now disregard the adopted child and consider the adopted child as not their child. And once they have a biological child, every other child, the ones they adopted and whatnot becomes a slave, a servant, unwanted, you know. This time I was treating that child. I've heard of cases where it's happened. This is exactly what happened to Sarah. She was the one who gave Hagar to Abraham for him to sleep with so she could have children through her maid servant Hagar, which was exactly what happened. She had a child, a son, through the maid servant, but now she doesn't want the son anymore. And she tells abraham i don't want this son this the child is no more hers to her inheriting any part of my wealth that my son my biological son should inherit i know this troubled abraham very much because ishmael also was his son remember this was his first son but god said to abraham don't be worried about the boy and your slave hagar do whatever god sarah tells you because it is true, Isaac, the child of Sarah, all the promises I made will happen. But don't worry, I'm also going to bless Ishmael. He's also your son, you know. 
So I don't blame Abraham for being worried because this is also his biological child. Ishmael is his biological child, his first son. And, you know, to Sarah, this child does, does, has nothing to do with her. He didn't come from her. And she didn't want the child of a servant who she wanted the child before to inherit anything or share the wealth with her son, her biological son. Oh, Sarah is human anyways. So the next morning, Abraham gave Hagar some food and a leather bag full of water. He put the child on her back and sent her away. She left as she wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water was all gone, she left the child under a bush. Abraham had Ishmael when he was 86 years old. And now he's 100. Okay, um, Isaac was born when Abraham was 100 years old. So it means Ishmael should be around 14 years old right now. 14, 13 to 14 years old. So when the water was all gone, you know, she, she couldn't bear to see her child die. So while she was sitting there, Hagar was sitting, she began to cry. I can't even imagine. Anyways, so God heard Ishmael crying, and from heaven the angel of God spoke to Hagar. What are you troubled about, Hagar? Don't be afraid. God has heard the boy crying. Get up. Go and pick him up and comfort him. I will make a great nation out of his descendants. Remember that she'd had an encounter with the angel of God before when Ishmael was born and she was mocking Sarah and Sarah made um, Abraham chase Hagar and Ishmael away and she met an angel and the angel told her to go back to Abraham to Sarah and become her maid servant again. So now this is her second encounter with an angel with God. Then God now opened Hagar's eyes and she saw a well. There had been a well there. You know, sometimes God needs to open our eyes. Something could be right in front of you, but you won't see it. God had to. Right where she was crying, there was a well, but she did not see it. God had to open her eyes, or should I say her spiritual eyes, for her to see what was right in front of her, to see that well. Then she went over, filled the leather bag with water, and gave some to the boy. God was with Ishmael as he grew up. He lived in the wilderness of Paran and became a skillful hunter. His mother got an Egyptian wife for him. Remember Hagar was Egyptian. She was a servant that was given to Sarah when she was Sarai and married to the king of Egypt. You know when Abraham had lied that Sarah, Sarai was his sister and the king of Egypt married Sarai for many years. Yes, she was one of the servants and she left with Sarai when she left the land of Egypt. So Hagar was an Egyptian. So she got his, his, her son, an Egyptian wife. Pardon the noise, please. I can't escape it, like I said. So imagine something being right in front of you. You know, that provision, maybe for wealth, for a husband, for a wife, so, for so many things. But us not being able to sit until God, God opens our eyes the same way he did to Hagar. And she saw what was in front of her. It's very interesting. It speaks to me on so many levels. You know, prayer for op open eyes and open ears is something I've been praying for for years. You know, it's very important to see and hear. So, in 22, Avimelech went with Fikol, the commander of his army, and said to Abraham, God is with you in everything you do. So make a vow here in the presence of God that you will not deceive me, my children, my descendants, yada, 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 yada. And Abraham promised him. Abraham said to him, I promise that I'll be loyal to you and this country in which I am living. So then Abraham now complained to Abimelech about a well which the servants of Abimelech had seized. And Abimelech said, oh, 
I don't know who did this. You didn't tell me about it, and this is the first I have heard of it. You know, Abraham is a wise man. He picked his battles. He didn't go fighting over the well. He waited for the right moment, and the right moment presented itself, the right opportunity presented itself, and then he told Avimelech about it, and it got settled. Then Abraham gave some sheep and cattle to Avimelech, and the two of them made an agreement. And then Abraham separated seven lambs from his flock. And Abimelech asked him why he did that. And Abraham answered, Accept these seven lambs. By doing this, you admit that I am the one who dug this well. And so the place was named Beersheba, because it was there that both of them made a vow, an agreement. After they had made this agreement at Beersheba, Abimelech and Fickle, Ends back to Philistia. Then Ab Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba and worshipped the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abraham lived in Philistia for a long time. Abraham was wise, you know. Let this be a sign of our agreement. He didn't just want an agreement to words, but he, there was a sign, you know, a demonstration like that. Those seven lambs mean this well was dug and by me, and you agree. Abraham picked his battle wisely. He waited for the right moment, and the moment presented itself. And then he told this dude about the well. And then he knew it wasn't just enough to say, oh, yes, the well is yours. There had to be a sign for that agreement. So take these seven lambs, and by noon, you admit that I am the one who dug this well. This well belongs to me, Abraham, and not to you. So it's like the seven lambs was him giving away the rights to the well. That's what King Avimelech did, you know, and everybody was happy. Yeah. Very wise. Yeah. So what I've learned from Abraham's actions are pick your battles wisely. Wait for the right time to react or to, you know, talk about something in a calm setting. He wasn't angry about it. He could have been angry for years or months over what Avimelech's servants were doing to his men, but no. But he did nothing, and then the opportunity presented itself, and he took it. Not just that, he made sure there was an agreement, and there was a sign for that agreement, like the seven, whatever is like, um, Avimele giving away his rights to the well. Very important lesson. There should always be a sign for an agreement, or some sort of, I think that was some sort of restitution, like giving away his right to it spiritually or something maybe i'm reaching but yeah that's how i see it as always i'm not a pastor i'm not a minister i'm not anything in church today i'm just a christian reading her bible and one thing is as i've been sharing this online i've been reading my bible and i've been learning a lot i think you learn when you share and as always, this is Francis Reza Bible. God bless you. See you tomorrow and goodbye.